Okay, so um, today we're going to talk about how to take notes. And lots of people, there's zillions of different ways to take notes. There's some very formal systems, and there's some informal systems. Um, what ways have you taken notes in the past? In notebooks, okay. And yes, you've done a lot of notes when people are lecturing or giving a presentation. How about when you've done other research projects, like in fourth grade, how did you take notes? Uh, last year, uh, we did this planet thing, and we had to take notes on books. We got these um, cards, mm -hmm. and then we put the notes there. Oh. Okay, so index cards like this. Did you copy everything from the book onto the card? No, Not just everything, like, just like notes and facts. Okay. Oh. We would, like, sometimes we would get on a laptop or something to look up some information that we do not know about it, and then we could write down some facts. Okay, so you wrote down facts. Did you, when you took notes, did you write complete sentences, or did you just write the ideas? The ideas. The ideas. Okay. Anybody want to add anything else? Oh, in uh, second grade, we had the index cards, and we would take, like, um, each day we would take a lesson and do, like, characteristics or fun facts. Yeah. And then we would um, just write down the different parts of doing that. One of the big things about research note-taking is staying organized in it. Some people, like, index cards because they can put them in envelopes based on whatever it is the topic is, like characteristics or habitat, if they're doing an animal. Um, the other advantage of index cards is you, when you get ready to write your draft, you can arrange them in whatever order you need to and rearrange them to make your sentences and your paragraphs. Yes? I remember in the second grade we had like this folder thingy, mm -hmm. and yep. then we had um, envelopes to them. Yep, and I have <coughs> I have envelopes here too. If you choose to use that method and the index cards, um, there are some no um, sorry rules of note taking. There's two no's of note taking. Number one, know your questions. You have to know what information you're looking for. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck reading this much of a book or a resource when you really only want to know this much. And the other is no sentences. If you write out sentences on your notes, it's going to take it up too much time and you're going to have it next. Um, there's more danger of copying. Here's a one, two, three note taking method. Read each sentence, decide if it's trash or treasure, and write the treasure on your graphic organizer or your index card. No sentences. What's a graphic organizer? Organizer. Graphic means to do with writing, but an organizer, a graphic organizer. So if I was doing, oh, that's a line paper. If I was doing birds as my topic, I might do it like this: birds, oh, yeah. uh, characteristics. And then I would put feathers. I think you misspelled characteristics. Probably did. But I'm just getting this up here really quick for you. That's a kind of graphic organizer. Sometimes they have squares or rectangles. Sometimes they have circles and Venn diagrams. Sometimes this is called, instead of a graphic organizer, a mind map. Um, those kinds of things. It's just another way to visually organize your information. So we're going to talk about um, note taking. This on this one <coughs> talked about trash or treasure words. And this short video that I'm going to show you right now. Can you get the lights up here? Can you get the lights in the back, please? Um, has information about trash or treasure notes. And then I have an, a second video that is. Um, has other ways to take notes. 
So, trash and treasure notes, or how to take notes for your research. I don't think this one has some. Trash and treasure. When we research, words are like the symbols on the pirate's treasure map. We only want the words that help us. Treasure words are words that answer our question. Remember you had to come up with research questions? Trash words are all of the other words on the page that might be good words, but they do not answer my question. When you take notes, read and understand your research questions. Look for key words. Read the article or website or book one sentence at a time. Stop and at the end of each sentence. Can I go back there? <laughs> write the treasure words um, stop the end of each sentence aside. so if your question is what does a poison dart frog eat what's the key word uh, poison no eat. eat eat what does he eat so that'll help you remember you can underline it you can just identify it in your head so they have to look for the treasure, the information about eating. There's a lot of information on that page, but poison dart frogs are small colorful frogs. Does that have anything to do with your question? No. Anything at all to do with eating? No. So you don't want to. You're not going to pay attention to it. They live in warm, humid habitats. Does that answer the question? Yeah. No. Has nothing to do with food. You're looking for food. Third one, we're looking for what does a poison dart frog eat? That's the information we want. Poison dart frogs eat meadow plankton and small insects. Yes. So you might write down. Meadow, plankton, and small insects, or eat under the question, what do poison dart frogs eat? Do you write complete sentences? No. no you don't need to because you don't want a <coughs> copy from the book or the resource. Poison dart frogs got their names because some tribes in the rainforest took the poison off of the frog and put it on their arrows to make deadly weapons. Anything about food? Some interesting fun facts, but you might have to go back to get those. You're just answering the question about food right now. Just answering the question about food. Poison dart frogs can be almost any bright color. Does that answer the question? No. No. So the only thing you would have on that note about what they eat is meadow plankton and... Uh, small insects. That would be it. Only four words on that page answered the question. So you really need to know your question, know what information you're looking for, and look at that. That is something to keep in mind when you are taking your notes. This one and welcome back to the McDougal Inform Action News. I'm your anchorman, Trent Boswell, and our top story today is Information Storm on Living Research Again. And we're going to cover some simple tips that might just save your academic life. Now, we all love to do research, but all across America, people are wondering how we're supposed to get the information out of our books and onto our papers. Well, I used NCY Wise Owl to find some good information, but I couldn't tell if I was supposed to copy it down, or which parts I really needed, or if I was just supposed to let the teacher do it for me. And was that before or after you were abducted by aliens? Why, that was right before. As you can see, note-taking can be serious business. Now we've got our in-house expert, Dr. Barrington Bundabar, here to tell us about the do's and don'ts of note-taking. Dr. Bundabar. Yes, Chief, I can hear you. It's Trent. Oh, sorry, Steve. Now, there are some things you must remember when you are taking down notes. 
Number one, always match your fact to your question. Make sure what you're writing down is important for your paper. If your research question asks, what are some physical features of the mighty guinea pig? The question again. Which one of these facts should I write down? Now, I can see that the only facts that refer to the physical features of the guinea pig are this one and this one. Now, try it yourself with the paper I have provided. Take a moment and look at the question at the top and uh, find out which facts refer to that question. Okay, take five minutes. No, take three minutes. Three minutes. We have, we have uh, much to do. So, what crops are grown in Indonesia? Most of the population practices in Islam. The staple crop is rice. The ancestors of modern Indonesians migrated to the islands from mainland Asia thousands of years ago. Indonesia is also a major supplier of natural rubber made from rubber trees, and Indonesia held free elections in 1999. All of that is factual information, but there's only, don't say it out loud, there's only one of those sentences answers the research question. What crops are grown? Don't just think it in your head. This is just like the trash and treasures I showed you just a few minutes ago that we talked about. Three minutes. Oof. I don't think it's really three minutes, if I remember. That guy was the same guy. Yeah. yeah. He's a teacher who decided to make it fun. And... <coughs> and he said he was adopted by aliens? He was just being silly. Yeah. Sneakers. Very good. I 
I have a bit of a challenge for you. Can you look at these notes I have written down and tell me what the original fact was? Oh, oh, oh. I want you to write down a complete sentence using just these few words. You can tell Give me. Give it a try. Go ahead. Tungsten has... Oh, let me turn down the music. Oh, tungsten has a high melting point and is used in light bulbs. Anybody have a different sentence to word that? The same information, but rewording it a different way. Uh, uh tungsten is a high melting point and also used in light bulbs. Okay. Me. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> uh, get ah, too late. Now let's go back to Mitch's studio. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, that's right, Trent Boswell here. Thank you, Dr. Rindabar. You are welcome, Ray. Now let's go to you. Scooter Wellington the third with a recap of some spectacular yes. note taking yes. that yes. happened earlier. So hit me, boss dog. All right. So there was this guy, and he was totally looking for some information on how a car engine works. And check it out. He looks at this whole article and was like, "Crap, this is way long." But then he pulls an awesome 380 kickflip and realizes he can look at the subheadings to find the section he wants. Awesome. He goes to the section on engines and finds some facts on the engine. Now he looked at the sentence and says, "Shaw." Why should I write all this down when I can get the important stuff and go drink more Mountain Dews and eat more Doritos? So, he totally turns a sentence that says, Most automobiles are powered by an internal combustion engine. In such an engine, a mixture of air and gasoline enters a two black cylinder through valves and turns it into air plus gasoline through valve, two black cylinder. It was totally groovtacular. I'm calling it Scooter's Research Cake of the Week. Back to you, B-Train! Uh, uh, thank you for that, Scooter. Now, hold on. Let's just end. We have Seamus Nagales Yulong reporting from the field where information stored on 11 has just taken a sinister turn. Hey, Trent, it's a real mess out here. Turns out that one research searcher wrote down some information but didn't write where he got it from. Apparently that Seamus act of plagiarism has offended the whole universe itself and there is terraforming in space-time continuum. Oh, why didn't that person cite their source? That's terrible, Seamus. I know, right? Here to keep you from destroying the universe again is Ernest Witherblossom the Fancy Bottom Kinger Kitten with the McDougal Information News, AccuNews Info Chicken. Thanks, Trent. I'm here with the AccuNews Info Chicken to show you all how to cite your sources right there on the note sheet. Now, you should have a copy of your T457 note taking apparatus. And at the bottom, you'll have to find a place to write down your sources title. Author, publisher, you list publication, copyright date, or last update, and URL if it's a website. So, if I got a lot of information from the book, The Little Red Hen, I would put The Little Red Hen in the title. Then I'd fill in the rest of the, of the information. I'd fill in the book's author. In this case, Heather Forrest. I'd find the publisher, Little Folk, the place publication, Little Rock. The copyright name, which is 2006, and since it's spoken, there's no URL. All right, back to you, Trent. That chicken is so pretty. But now, to recap our top story, we've learned today that we must find the facts that answer our questions, copy down the important parts, just the important parts, and always cite the source you get your information from. I'm Trent Boswell, signing off. Know your questions and know sentences. And the third one is cite your sources. A lot of people do, I'm going to borrow yours for just a moment, mm -hmm. when they fill out their citation, now if I do this for the right way, you have your citation page.
page. The how to make bibliography or resources page. So if Meg had used this book on Orno and filled this out and put a number one here, then when she took notes on an index card, instead of writing out all of this information on this card, she could just put a number one in the corner, and then she would know that information came from this source. I remember seeing that in seventh grade. Yep. Yes? Um, the camera battery is getting low. That's okay. Well, put, but thank you for telling me I'll add some more. Any questions about note taking right now? Um, we're, I'd like you to open to page 19, and we're going to do some practice ones. And we'll stop the videoing right now while you're doing practice. So 